How you guys doing today? Hey, everybody. It's the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Luke. I'm Joe. And today, we're going to be talking about things, <laughs> as we sometimes do. Yeah. Uh, start off with news of the stupid. A Japan train minister resides after being accused of getting crabs and melons to voters. Which, okay. I mean, that's just... They have such, just really strict rules they have such... about everything in Japan. But, like, they have such strange happenings, yeah. right? Like, like, it almost justifies what... There's like like it's just it's so weird though you it's, know it's but like, like, its weirdness is that it's cl close yeah it's almost there it's like oh of course he's bribing people you would always you but know but then you sit someone, there and, you, like, and then like, oh no it's with melons and crabs and you like, stop and you're like really uh, but and then okay if it's a poor that's Japan it's not really a poor country there, yeah. maybe it's a really poor area but I would if this had come out of like Brazil or I'm trying to think of a coastal South American country. You Chile. wouldn't fucking bat an eye. Yeah. You wouldn't. Yeah. Chile, uh, Haiti. You would be like, oh, okay. That's yeah. Haiti. That's just, that's, that's just poor. That's just what happens. That I would, guess. that's kind of normal. Like and you then accept you that hear, for some reason, but then you if hear. If this was like fucking Maine, although they love their crabs in Maine. So Maine. But yeah, if it was coming from Maine where a judge was bribing people or who, whatever he was, was yeah. bribing people with melons and crabs. Japan's trade minister, Ishu Shigawa, uh, <laughs> resigned on Friday, less than two months after he was appointed, following accusations of violating the country's election law. Basically, their election law bans politicians from sending gifts or donations to voters in their home constituency. Mm-hmm. But it's like crabs and melons, though. <laughs> like, like it's just the most random shit you could think of, and I'm just like, it's, uh, okay. Uh, that's very similar, though, like... um. Stuff like I, I I know what happens with government and things, but like even before the NCAA now, where they're working on allowing players to take sponsorships and things. Mm -hmm. um, before that, you know, certain college recruiters they they were they're very strict on what they can and can't do, right? Because of course, colleges have gotten caught in the past, just right, Paying yeah. people to come, right? To their of school. course, which you know that's dumb. Don't do that. Yeah. So this is kind of like one of them taking a player and his family or friends out for like. A you know six hundred dollar plate dinner, and then buying your or you know so most of the time it's usually buying them a car. Yeah, and just it's like no 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 I didn't buy him that car to come to school I just liked him it was a gift. Yeah yeah, um, there's another incident. Um, aside from gifting Tokyo voters melons, oranges, crabs, and royal jelly, and royal jelly can't um, forget the royal jelly. One of the things which I think shouldn't even really factor in because uh, uh, what I'm about to explain was um, a monetary gift during a recent wake. Um, he offered someone 20,000 yen, which is like around $184, mm -hmm. uh, to the family of one of his supporters, which is a Japanese custom known as incense money, a monetary condolence gift for families grieving due to a loss. Uh, okay. So I don't even think you should count that. If it's like – if it's a cultural custom – Yeah. Why? The only Why way hold I, that against him? If this is someone, a family he's never met, that he has no, and it's not, and it's yes, it's a, a a cultural thing, but something that's kind of it's not always done anymore, right? And it's usually only done with people you're close to or you know friends with, right? Then I kind of see why they would question it, right? But still, it's something where I think if he did one. Whatever. If he did like seven or eight and he has no contact with these people whatsoever, then you start kind of looking yeah, at it. Yeah. Like, and, and anyone who would potentially vote for him anyway should kind of look at it like he's trying to buy votes with the dead. <laughs> That's I mean, really shitty. Yeah, I could see that being a thing, but at the same time, this is just a, a custom. No, no, no. That yeah, the do. one time. Yeah, I'm like, and it's a one time thing because that's that's what it mentions here. That it's a one time thing. It doesn't mention like it happened multiple he, times. He, did, he randomly had these seventeen uncles <laughs> pass away. Yeah, no, it's not like he's doing that. Um, it's just, it's just. I think it's kind of silly, yeah. in my honest opinion, you know, that, that that's being held against him. But I wonder... The rest of it, I completely understand, you know, giving out, like, expensive foods yeah. and stuff, you know, like... I mean, it might not have even been expensive. He might have said, like, hey, come to this rally, you get a free dinner or something. Which is what I'm questioning, like... Do do they? I've never heard of a politician doing that in America. No, I like no, unless no, no, they no. are. You're talking no, no, really no. low politicians. Um, 
I do that in America. You don't you do that in America because you pay them to go. To I was just gonna say yeah. you you pay usually like you pay go to, to go to their go, stupid yeah, fucking. Yeah, you conference. go to a dinner where it's two hundred dollars a plate dinner. Yeah, well, those usually go for charity. I'm just saying when they're when they're, yeah the charity being their super packed, but yes. Well, okay, yeah, no, there's the, totally those, and right. yeah, during the election time, those are the ones because I know they do like cha- they do like charity dinners for you know cancer foundation or whatever but right, right, yeah, right. yeah the super pack charity dinners exactly you pay for that but i mean just the general right like yeah. if somebody went into a town a small town and was like hey we're having a rally for bernie sanders because he's the fucking last one i can think of um come out and you know you get fucking we're panning out snacks yeah like do they ever do that or i don't know i don't think so because I mean, uh, people go to these places. People go to stuff like that I'm, because they want to support the politician to get his word out, right? Or exactly, his or her word exactly. Out. But I mean, you offer something free for people, you get people to show up. <laughs> it's it's that fucking South Park episode where they uh, advertised a free hat. <laughs> and this whole community then wanted to get a guy out of prison who was convicted of killing like seventeen babies. Because those people say, do you know how violent a two-year-old can be? <laughs> oh, God, South Park is the best. All right, man. Let's move on a little bit. Yeah. Um, this one isn't so much a news story as it's just, I just found it funny. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a horse that plays dead every time someone tries to ride him. <laughs> um, horse just says, fuck you. The horse is a very good actor. Every time someone tries to ride him, he appears to give up the ghost and drops to the floor pretending to be dead. Jin Gang has the death trick down so well he even loses his tongue and puts his hooves in weird positions to make like he can look on no longer. Uh, his owners say it happens whenever people get onto the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, for anyone not like wondering, this is from this is a news story from the UK. It's based in Korea, uh, South Korea. Uh-huh. And um, if yeah. you just want to know where this adorable horse lives, yeah, there's just yeah, in case you want to go see it, you know, whatever. Yes. Um, we go see the adorable horse that plays dead. Uh, it's it's hilarious. Uh, someone who has seen the video, and um, I I I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I probably won't do anything because I'll say I'll put it in the video, link, but I'll I'll forget <laughs> completely. Too. Fucking forget. Um, but yeah, he only stays on the ground for a few seconds. But the moment anyone starts approaching to get on him again, he drops back to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good that's a great horse I want this horse I, I wish I could horse. remember the... Luke let's go to South Korea we're gonna go see the horse we're gonna go see the horse you can try and ride it it'll fall down we all laugh yay <laughs> the um... owners will charge us 10 bucks to see it <laughs> horse Probably. fall down when you ride yeah no it's uh, that would be uh, I'd pay for that like fuck it I would no I wouldn't I'll watch the video on YouTube <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but that doesn't that, that pales in comparison to watching it in person I'm sure it would be a uh, just a, a soul rending moment yeah right uh, that like every the... time I see videos of horses acting funny and shit yeah on uh, like Reddit I'm immediately like I like god damn maybe I want a horse and then you go into the comments and people are like horses are like big dogs that just constantly try to kill themselves because apparently horses just try and fuck themselves up all the time, given the chance. And you go if you go and find those comments, you'll find some funny ass fucking stories of people whose horses are like, oh, he tried to squeeze his way through a fence that only had a one and a half foot gap and got like stuck halfway through <laughs> upside down. <laughs> upside like, down like the most random shit <laughs> it's just big dumb stupid animals that are incredibly smart and yet really dumb I suicidally mean, dumb okay. humans can be described in a similar fashion big dumb animals we're big dumb animals that are incredibly smart but do stupid shit yes you know like come on <laughs> um woman wants it for climbing into Bronx Zoo lion exhibit I am the lion now <laughs> no um, a woman who was wanted by police for trespassing after climbing into the lion enclosure at the Bronx Zoo told reporters in a bizarre interview that she wasn't afraid to approach the wild animal. I fear nobody. No animal, no human, no one. So no, I wasn't fearing of the lion because the lion loved me. That's why he came to me and I let the lion know, Lion, I love you. Maya Autry said press after a court appearance on Thursday for ship- shoplifting charge in Kearney, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> she, wait, she was caught by shoplifting as well? Yeah, she is. So, um, I am the candy bar. The candy bar love me. I must have the candy bar. It goes with me. Uh, it's just like, <laughs> what, what is. In yes. a 15 minute interview, Audrey said her decision to climb a fence and head into the lines in was a spiritual experience. 
I am the lion now. Can't you tell? Have you ever heard of reincarnation? Do your history, young man, she instructed the reporter. She complimented <laughs> so she's his fucking eyes and nuts. That's basically, just, yeah. She's um, bad shit crazy. Audrey was caught on, on video in late September standing in front of the lion in the lion, African lion uh, exhibit. The video shows she broke into a dance and waved at the creature, which stood nearly motionless staring at her. Thank Bronx you. Zoo confirmed oh, the woman had doing? breached a barrier and said there was a concrete trench between Audrey and the lion. Oh, my goodness. Why? I, why didn't she get eaten is my question. Why? Yeah, right? Like, how did she not See, get eaten? See, when those stories end well, it ends with a mauling. <laughs> So-and-so goes to fuck with the animals in the zoo. Mauling. <laughs> yes. Because that's what happens with wild animals. Yeah, when you fuck with wild animals. Like, it doesn't Especially matter that in, they're in, in a zoo, yeah. right? They're still wild animals. They're still going to fuck you up. Your day is going to be very, very bad. Fucking who? I, it probably is multi, multiple comedians, but I can think. I I want to say it's, um, it's not Kevin Hart. It, one of there's a comedian who has a great bit about lions waiting for somebody to get in the fucking cage, and they'll just go back and forth across stage like, oh shit, here we go, here we go. Oh wow, yeah, no. <laughs> uh. Sounds like death. <laughs> it sounds. It's what it should be. It, that's exactly what it. Like what somebody it be, yes. who is legitimately suicidal. That is like, I'm gonna go give my body. Like, no, stop that person. Yes. These stupid fucking people are like, I just want to get close to it. I want to see it. I want to pet it's it. It's fucking crazy. You fucking die. You, you fucking it's die. It's fucking crazy. That's how that works. That's how that should work. You should die. There's a pretty fucking. Uh, I, I, I don't think it shows anything, but it's kind of a horrific video, but it just shows the utter stupidity of people Yes, where these people are driving through a safari park where literally everywhere says, do not fucking get out of your car. Do not get out of your car. There are wild animals. They will eat you. Do not get out of your car. You will get eaten. Do not get out of your car. Yeah. These people are pulling through, park their fucking car on the side. Everybody gets out to start taking pictures and one of them get dragged, got dragged away by lions. It's like... Stop. What did you expect was going to happen? You play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. Is that the quote? Yeah, yeah. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Yeah. Yep. yep. That's how it goes. And you you played a stupid game, you got a stupid prize. Yeah. Just listen. You got eaten by a lion. Just listen to uh, fucking a Joe Rogan podcast where they talk about animals. Yes. And let him talk about bears for five minutes. And you're like, nope. <laughs> I don't know. There's no. There's no Smokey the Bear. There's no Teddy Bears. Those are fucking monstrous eating machines. <laughs> Except for the Black Bear, you can scare that one you off. You can scare that one off. Yeah. But even then, sometimes you just piss them off, and they'll fucking just want to tear you apart. Yeah. Also, Black Bears can climb trees really, really well. So don't think you're safe in a tree. Oh yeah, you're gonna get fucked up. Apparently, I think even small grizzly bears can climb trees too. Yep. Something like that. Yeah. All right. Um. Hmm. I had, so let's move on. I had one really, really weird one. Okay. What, what did you have? Uh, Utah. Man is struck by lightning while masturbating to the Bible. Oh, my. <laughs> Which is a lot to take in. He's getting um, his holy rocks off. <laughs> uh, Mountain Pleasant, Utah, a repentant man from Utah, was found in critical condition and rescued by Mount uh, Pleasant patrol officers after the 66-year-old man was allegedly told officers he had been masturbating to the Bible moments before being struck down by lightning by a lightning bolt. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, that, it's like masturbating to the penthouse letters, <laughs> the dear penthouse letters. Is that what, what was going on? Or mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Uh, dude. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I just... <sighs> like, the Bible? Of all places? I mean, I guess there is a lot of, like, adultery and, and weird shit in the Bible. Yeah. But, I mean, come on, man. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Um, I got one more. This was not in his home, either. He oh. was out hiking. Oh. Which he says uh, he often does. And, it, and it's the sad part of this. Since He says, since my wife passed away last year, I often seek tranquility of hiking in the mount, uh, uh, in the trails of Mount Pleasant. Right, uh, right. And he takes his Bible with him every time, as you do. Um, I, I guess so. I, I would so know. So people that have been in Bible school uh, might recognize this passage because it is literally one of those passages in the Bible that if you ever read it in class, everyone just giggles. Um, Ezekiel 19 and 20, 
Uh, which he warns, speaking of this guy who got struck by lightning, apparently. Is it, is it the one about the donkey balls? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You figured. know exactly what yeah, it is. Yep. He warns, must be read only by strong, devout Christians with a greater understanding of the Bible's inherent truths. <laughs> uh, and that Bible verse is yet she became more and more promiscuous as she recalled the days of her youth when she was a prostitute in Egypt there she lusted after her lovers who genitals <laughs> were like those of donkeys and who missions the missions were like that of horses and I think that's the King James version too <laughs> oh my goodness oh, oh wow that, that's amazing I love that story that's just so fucking. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's the All good right. book. Okay, yeah, that's that's the the good book. If, especially if you're into uh, horse dicks. Are you, are you in the horse dicks? <laughs> are you in the horse dicks? <laughs> I mean, didn't we do? There's an entire. Um, we did that joke on horse fucking, so why yeah. not? You know. <laughs> oh my! All right, um, one more. And yeah. uh, it's a bit cheaty because it's a Florida man post. Um, but we all love a good Florida man. It happened a year ago, a year and a half ago or so. But mm-hmm. still, a Florida man is charged with attempted premeditated murder for trying to set child molesters on fire at a motel, cop said. Now, the um, the headline is man charged after trying to barbecue all the child molesters. Um, which is great. <laughs> Following his arrest on March 7th, Jorge yes. Porto Sierra, 50, allegedly told police he wanted to barbecue all the child molesters and kill him. Two of his alleged victims are convicted sex offenders, the station confirmed. Porto Sierra stormed a room with a friendly village inn in Kissimmee, screaming, I'm going to kill you, you child molester, witnesses told authorities. He poured gasoline outside the motel room and broke a window so he could pour gasoline inside the room. Another couple claims he also smashed into their car and poured gasoline all over it. He reportedly carried a lit cigarette with him while making the threats. When grilled on why he didn't torture the room, Porto Sierra told the police they got here too soon. <laughs> why didn't you fucking set it on fire? You beat me because he wanted to enjoy the rest of that fucking cigarette. I mean, right? <laughs> so there's a part of me that's yes, and then the rest of me is very no. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm kind of torn on it myself. But, I mean, obviously... Yeah, kill the sex, of, kill the child molesters. Yes. You know, like, I'm all for that. But I don't know about the property yeah, damage you know what, you're and stuff like that. setting someone else's property on yeah, fire. Yeah, I mean, okay, their car are fine, but, you know. Yeah. There's lots know. of other, like, people that can be hurt. Yeah, you know, innocent people that had nothing to do with their molestations. <laughs> but I, we, we like the energy. We love, we're on board <laughs> with the energy, man. We're just going to redirect that. We're completely there. That's fucking great. Until you got now, to, they like. they were actually committed, because that was my fear also, is that this, I'm going to burn the child molesters, and these are just two, like, uh, dudes. Yeah, no, I and, mean. And, like, out of nowhere. The, the TV, the TV station, West TV, W-E-S-H, uh, did confirm that. Two of his alleged victims are convicted sex offenders. Okay, but we don't know if they were even convicted for, like, pedophilia or anything. Else. Not necessarily. You're correct Because you can get on that for taking a piss uh, outside. Yeah. Like. That's why I'm always, like, so fucking paranoid yeah. when I'm out and about like that. Like, like if I have to piss, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to choose this innocuous bush on the side of the road where nobody is, and then some kids walk by or something yeah, to see oh, my yo, dick. You could not, it, it could be nighttime. Yeah. You could not know there's a school, like, across that field or whatever. Yeah. And then still get hit with that. It's like, really, guys? Yep. Really? I don't know. I, 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 whatever, man. And that kind of shit ruins your life too. Oh, yeah, know? like that. That that's your life stuck on ruining. That list. I I don't remember how we have to get off of it, or if it's even possible. There was a story of a, I, I, and I mean it happens. Seventeen year old guy has uh, sex with a sixteen year old girl when they're in high school. Yeah, her parents um, press charges on him. Yeah, even though he's a year older than her, and she's a like, and they're both minors. They're both minors. Yeah, that's the key part. They're both fucking minors too. And then he slapped with uh, sexual assault. Statutory rape like, charges, yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on to something <laughs> better. We'll just swing into really depressing, uh, difficult <laughs> cultural things. Yeah, we, we go from uh, talking about, you know, just happy shit and fun shit and barbecue oh, and pedophiles. That's, that's the way the world is, folks. <laughs> that, that's real right there. All right. Um, moving on. What else were we going to, you had, 
You were going to talk about Outer Worlds? Oh, yeah, yeah. I played, I did play Outer, Wa- Outer Worlds. Because we talked about it a week ago or so. Yeah, yeah. When we, um, talk, we mentioned it was on Game Pass and all the reviews were looking good. And now did, you've No, had, no, I don't even think. It was before that. Oh, well, dude, listen, I'm high right now. I don't know. <laughs> I'm high as fuck. Um, but no, when we talked about it, it was almost, it was going to come out, but I was saying I was disappointed because I wouldn't, I'd have to, I, I'd probably have to buy a console version instead of being able to play it on PC. Right. Which is still true because it's a year on... Um, uh, epic epic yeah which i just don't want to use right but what is cool about it on console is that it is on game pass right so i've effectively already paid for it it's right. free right um so i did finally get to play it and it it surprised me with i thought the i thought the game from what i'd seen looked like it was going to be mostly like gray not maybe not gray but fallout esque yeah the visuals ugly no yeah. it's immediately like the first planet you land on is like super bright and colorful um it it doesn't look bad at all right um characters are kind of samey but I, I, again it's very forgivable for what i've seen so far right right because this is this is the successor to fallout right like, this is the from the very successor. beginning yeah there's no there's like no, it's not even like trying to like hide it and change stuff from the very beginning the first thing you do is select your attributes um, which I don't think were the exactly the same as Fallout's, but they fucking are. Right. Strength, Dex. I mean, there's the only stuff so you get many. In all the games. Yeah, yeah, there's only so many that you can do, right? Like, um, you select those. You pick perks. You you know, level up certain things. I mean, it's so um, amazingly close to Fallout New Vegas and Fallout Three. I was immediately like, ah, I see what you're doing, and I love it. Like, um, and then the game itself is it. It feels like Fallout. Um, it is fun. I, I didn't even play it for more than three. I think I got three hours in. So, you know, maybe it takes a turn. But as where I'm playing now, yes, it's it's actually really fun. Like, I immediately just going, and I like to be very, like, try and be specific with my characters and when I play Fallout games. Right, right. Um, especially if I don't know if I can become, like, the master of everything, like I do in most games. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, how do I want to play this character? And I typically... Uh, in this case, I was like, I'm going with the ability, it's strength of nothing, but guns and like really intelligent and really pers- um, persuasive. Right. So you're basically being a sociopath. Maybe, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but I can't stand You're being people. really charming and you're being really intelligent yeah. and having nothing else going for you. Okay. <laughs> That's like a little foreshadowing because immediately upon playing the game, I start like the first gay guy I meet, I'm like, he's hurt and he's like a guard or something. Right. And he's like, hey, can you help me out? I'm uh, I'm hurt and I can't get through, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hey, you know what you should do is you should give me your gun. I'll go out there and find somebody and send them back to help you out. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Which immediately he's like, yeah, that's a great idea. Here's my gun. Oh, by the way, I have some extra ammo. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yep, this is what I'm doing. Yep, you're a social out. <laughs> and it's, it really is like, I mean, when you fight the random like raider type character, they just come at you and start trying to kill you. But like characters I interact with, I'm finding so many options to like lie to them, to persuade them, to um, because I've got both. Uh, I can intimidate them. Like I just immediately, I'm like, oh no, this is. I'm playing the character who gets other people to do my shit for me, by any means necessary. <laughs> Lie, cheat, persuade, like, <laughs> and that's what you can do. Like, like immediately for four or five characters in, and each one of them having their own different things going on. Right, right. I can. I, I've been able to use my skills to affect. The conversation and it's been fun. I told, I convinced the two guards to go and fight by asking them if they were cowards. Yeah, like I thought you guys were supposed to be really tough and brave. <laughs> and they go out and did all the fighting for me. Of course, I ran up behind them and looted the bodies. Of course, of course. So, um, yeah. I mean, why would you not? Of course. You know, like that sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. Like this might be a mm-hmm. game I'll look into. It feels very, and it's. It's a Bethesda game without all of the Bethesda flaws so far. And I mean, that's what yeah. I read from a lot of reviews. Uh, there are some some small glitches and things, but, like, nothing compared to a normal Fallout release. Yeah. Or a normal Skyrim release. Right. Like, I, I think... I, I mean, I so 
I think like when you when you take on a project that mm-hmm. is bigger than simple stuff, there's always going to be bugs, right? Yes, yeah, like, yeah that, you're always like, going to have to be bugs. Especially when you build an open world mm-hmm. uh, game. So like I expect that kind of stuff, you know. So I'm like I'm completely on board with it. I'm always okay with bugs. Um, like The Witcher Three, uh, to talk about that and beat that dead horse, you know, I've always said is one of the most stable games I've ever played. Yeah. Um, and it's also when you one don't of, consider the horse. <laughs> that's not a bug. That's a feature. Yes. Um, uh, but when you look and uh, aside from some some bugs with animations like that, like mm-hmm. I've had bugs with animations. I got some of them documented on my my uh, YouTube channel where Geralt's looking walking weirdly and stuff like I that. I actually had quite a few animation. Those small bugs, the, like yeah, you they're say, little things. They're not the game breaking. Don't break, yeah. Whereas you got like a Bethesda game like Skyrim. How many game breaking bugs are in that game? Yeah. Like just out the box at the get go. How many bugs can you encounter? Fix, so. Yeah, how many bugs can you encounter not just in the game itself, but then in the game's engine mm-hmm. that causes it to just not work half the time? Yeah. You know, like like I sat there, I played through it on Switch, and I took advantage of some of those breaking some of those bugs because some of them you can take advantage of yeah. and exploit them. But it's like I'm surprised I actually did make it through to the end and defeat Mirak without fucking any everything fucking up. Which, by the way, there's a bug fighting Mirak. If you do too much damage to him, yeah, you get stuck in that loop, and I did twice <laughs> because I'm just beating the shit out of him with whatever the fuck I had. I don't even yeah. know what I have. I'd have to fire the game up and find out. So, but it's still it's stuff that's like that you don't have that with the Outer Wilds. But but the thing with this is, I, I just have to say one more thing. Yeah, with the switch release specifically is addressing that why didn't bethesda fix it oh again because bethesda they don't care they 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 do not care which is why this is such a breath of fresh air and i think we've almost gotten complacent because of the way bethesda releases those games yes it's not fair to any other developer like even um things like um kingdoms of amalar that's not quite the same openness, yeah. but it's a very huge game. There's tons of stuff in that, and it didn't have the kind of bugs nope. at all. I mean, and it was still a great game. Yeah, like that. that and that's what I say about Witcher Three, because yeah, like, exactly. Like, it how barely it, has any of those? Bugs. It's such a it's huge game. Visual you bug. don't really encounter any loading times or loading yeah. screens. You know, it, and it's a massive world. What bugs do you really encounter? You know? Yeah, I mean, there's a few. Aside from, a while, but... aside from animation bugs, it's okay, whatever. I don't and I'm sure there's that. different bugs people have had. Right. But again, they also have kept up on that with constant updates. Yeah, like, like I, I've never encountered a bug in The Witcher 3 where I couldn't get around it. Like, mm-hmm. there was never, like, where there was a bug where it broke the quest or it broke the game where I couldn't play the game and continue on and progress anymore. Whereas I know I've encountered bugs like that in Skyrim. I know I've encountered bugs like that in other Bethesda games. Like, yeah. fix your shit. Whatever. But yeah, that, that, that's just... And I'm glad to hear that there's not really anything like that so no. far. Yeah, I, I think uh, they've and like, done an amazing job. With, with how game. And with how big games like this are, how many people are probably playing it right away. Mm-hmm. Because you said it's on Game Pass. Um you know, you would think that by now if somebody would have found a game breaking bug, we would have held heard about it. So far, it's been nothing but mostly neutral to positive reviews of the game. So or if they, if somebody has, it's been so rare an occurrence that you know it hasn't become like a huge news story or anything like that. Um, and I think it probably would, especially if there are people that were looking to shoot this game down very quickly. Yeah. Um, like one of the first things I even saw in the game. Was like we mentioned how samey some of the pictures, some of the faces look. Right. Was somebody saying that the whole game was awful looking and things like that, and using that as an example yeah. when it's not. I mean, the the character models are what they are. They're not great. They're not the best, but they're not. It's not. I mean, they're not Oblivion uh, bad, so no, that's fine. No, 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 nowhere near that bad. They're not even as bad as like Fallout seventy six. You can cut. You can do tons of customization to your character. Right, which is always nice. I mean, you know, speaking of bugs and stuff, I I, I have to say that Destiny Two has been surprisingly That's, I was going to mention bug that too. free. I haven't encountered much. A few things, uh, animation bugs mostly. Like I, I I and I took a screenshot of it um, where I was playing a few nights ago and went to switch my weapons mm-hmm. and had my bow out and my character had his animation. Yes, in the bow, I've had but that there was no bow times. in my hand. And so I, that's I've seen almost that. when I saw that, I I just laughed because that's almost something. I 
or it is something I expect about uh, online shooters. Yeah. And especially online open world games, something like light like that, where the or small, where that um, character model or item model, whatever you want to call it, doesn't load. Right. Because I see that all the time. Right. And in most games, when I've seen that, it, I've seen it where it doesn't go away. In Destiny, it almost immediately goes away. Like you switch your weapons again, or mm-hmm. you start you keep going for a little while, and the boat pops in. Uh, but I've played games where my weapon never came back for like an hour or more <laughs> playing until like I hit another loading screen, right? Like a, or a cutscene or something, right? Um, and I noticed I was going to mention I noticed the first stutter that I've had playing this game at all in all the combats and everything when I was playing um, the story earlier today or earlier last night. In yeah. the morning, whatever. This morning, whatever. Yeah. Right. I was cro- I think I was crossing a bridge, and there's this massive battle going on, and it's like a, like, you, you can see half the fucking galaxy or something like that. I can't remember. I just know it was really open and beautiful, and and in in the middle of this battle, and I'm driving a tank. Yeah. And it was there. I I, I noticed the frame rate dropped. Like I hit a couple like. Frame right, rate drops, right. and then it immediately picked back up, and and that's the really the reason I think I noticed. It, stuck out in my mind is I haven't had a single time playing it online, either from, you know, internet access or um, just the game, the, my computer having a problem running it. Yeah. I haven't ever seen any stuttering. I mean, I, I've had... been that super stable. I That's less stability and more just whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But I've, had, I've definitely had frame drops. Um, but... I would say ninety five percent of the gun time the game is just silky smooth sixty. Yeah. So I don't have I don't generally think about it, but like if we're causing a shitload of explosions in online mm-hmm. play, I might have a few frame drops. Yeah. If we are in an area where there's like a hundred million enemies and it's usually only online stuff. Well, if I'm playing local campaign type stuff, mm-hmm. or if I'm just doing solo shit, not playing with other people necessarily, I'm usually fine. Um, if I jump into the game. And I go straight to the tower where there's like a hundred people at one time and I'm scrolling and like I'm looking around and all their names are popping up. I'll get frame drops then. Oh, wow. Which is whatever at this point. Yeah. Um, but it's still fine. The game is great. Like, it makes me so happy. It's either like my computer is is just at that level to play it perfectly or with my internet access. Yeah, it's probably a little bit of both. Yeah, um, I'm just like, I don't, I don't, I because that's one thing that surprised me. In most games I played online, mm-hmm. if there's a hub world, you go there and you expect like an extra few seconds of the game just trying to load all these people from either, you know, the connection, the server or whatever. Whatever reason that's caused, and I don't, I don't get that at all in this game. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's been pretty surprised, especially right now that there's a public event, or not a public event, but like a a big uh, a holiday event. event. Yeah, and there's a lot of times you load in, and there will be people standing right there in the center, a ton of people. Yeah, and I haven't had any issue with it. Yeah. That's good, though. I mean, uh, yeah. I I haven't had any crashes except for one or two. Um, I have had the odd crash. But uh, actually, I've had one crash, and I yeah. don't remember what what was going on. But we were doing something. You, me, and you, my, you, Manny, and I were playing, and the game did crash. Yeah, I had so. a crash once when we were playing. I don't, I don't remember. But it, it did it. Is that the one? One? I think. I don't think it made my whole computer. Yeah, I don't think I had to reboot completely. But I, I thought I was going to have to. I remember that time where I swapped, uh, where I turned off my VPN in the middle of the game. Yes, that and it was made funny. me completely exit the game to get reconnected to Bungie mm-hmm. servers. Like, it, I'm like, what the fuck, man? Really? Um, but other than that, whatever, man. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. I'm. I mean, I love, I love the game. Um, so yeah, there's our little review of Destiny. Go play. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's. I, I feel like we've talked about it before, and aside from the la- one episode where we did nothing but play Destiny for yeah. an hour and a half. Um, but I don't know. It's um, one I've been playing most, and I plan on playing quite a few games this weekend. Oh, I played fucking Modern Warfare. Uh huh. And um, it's Modern Warfare. It's a Modern Warfare campaign. It's good. It's what I wanted because I've heard some people criticizing it for being essentially a hyper active action movie in video game form. Right. Where, I mean, there's just explosions and crazy Michael Bay level shit going on. But right, right. this is exactly what Call of Duty was made, built on cinematic moments where you see, you know, like a, a fucking cruise, a ship uh, blow up and it's crazy stuff. 
Right. And that's exactly what I wanted from this. And that's that's what it is. Um, the gameplay in the campaign, though, yeah, I like it, it for the most part, but something f- doesn't. It feels a bit off. Mm-hmm. Um, the the most I can think of is maybe it's because I've gotten used to playing like games like Destiny and things like that, right, uh, right, Battlefield, and then online games where when you hit something, the game really clearly indicates that you're hitting it, and then you killed it. Um, with like a red circle or a red mark or whatever. Right, right. Um, this game, I don't think it doesn't do that. So it, it almost feels like instead of like I'm shooting an enemy, um, it feels kind of floaty. Is Ooh. the best way I can put it. Mm. It's not bad, and I still playing the campaign, shooting people down, um, right, right. using the sniper rifle is still satisfying. Right. There's a there's a, a moment where you're trapped in an embassy, and just tons and tons of enemies are coming at you. And I was using this, um, like, M14, um, uh, like, 15-round magazine, semi-automatic sniper rifle. Yes. Just, and you're doing the Call of Duty thing. You're going down the line of all these troops. And it's just, like, I, I get into that mode where I'm, like, I start counting, like, one, two, three, four. <laughs> I love that. And that was fun. They still keep that intact. But are you stacking rocks in, in sending order from size? <laughs> according to size. Yes. <laughs> Because if you're not, you don't count. <laughs> yeah, no. I have a Beretta M50. I can kill a building. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, a fucking Archer. I got the Archer reference. They don't there. do uh, the 50 caliber. Instead, they do something that, because uh, I'm a fan of um, a, a gun YouTube channel, um, where the guys just he shoots watermelons and shit basically right uh, and does funny like sketches and things like that right um he'll do episodes where he's like i'm just gonna shoot this car let's see if the car can stop bullets like stuff like that one of the guns he got is a really like it's not a super well known everybody knows what the 50 cal is right of kill course. a building it's called 338 lapua uh-huh. And it's a it's like a step down. They they've kind of put a middle uh sh- round uh-huh. between like uh Blackout 300 or like a 30 out 6 or 300 Win Mag or something. But the 338 Lapua is still a massive armor piercing round. Right. And it's just it was funny to me that that's the the the, the gun they chose. Right. Or the bullet they chose and I was like, "Oh, I recognize that." Yes. <laughs> I saw that with the funny man on the YouTube who shot a car. <laughs> he killed a, a car with it. He killed a car with it. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it's still the thing is, it doesn't feel as good as, and part of that could just be nostalgia, right? It doesn't feel as good as old Call of Duty did when you played those campaigns, right? It doesn't like the sniping section where you're like dedicated on a roof shooting is nothing compared right. to how good it was in Modern Warfare. The um. Right, right. What is that? I can't even remember. Stay quiet or something like that. Where you're crawling around in a ghillie suit. I have no idea. <laughs> you spend like the first 10 or 15 minutes of that mission right. not shooting a damn thing. It's just so – it's it's quiet and you're going slow and you're like – it's stealth. Right, But right. you're crawling through a field. Well, it, But, I mean, it's also great story writing and everything where in this game you're on a roof and they're like, oh, we're going to sight in your gun for different ranges – that's interesting, but at that, like, five seconds later, it's, okay, I'm just shooting until someone dies and until the enemies drop. And they're just waves of enemies coming in. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's like, oh, okay, it's fun. It's a good Call of Duty campaign. Um, I haven't beat it yet, but it's apparently really short, like f- four to six hours short, right. which is a little disappointing. Um, but... Yeah, it's 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 still good. It's still it's it's better than the campaigns have been for like six games. Right. That, that that's an it improvement. Does, that's it a is a pretty up. good modern warfare. Uh, I don't like the multiplayer. I that makes sense. Free for all and the six on six is okay because it's just a standard deathmatch shooter or like some of the objective modes. Right. They're, right. they're fine. Right. Um, the th- reason I was so hyped for this, or at least moderately excited for it. Was they were going to do 20 on 20 bigger battles with vehicles. Right. Um, and it's awful. Oh. It is, it is like someone played or heard about the concept of a battlefield um, capt- uh, uh, conquest match. Yes. Like saw 15 minutes of it and went, oh, I can do that. 
Yeah. And then they try to do it, and it is so fucking bad. It feels just terrible. And even with the 20 people, yes, sometimes you are just standing around looking at a wall. Like, I don't where there's no one here. I don't know where the fuck the enemies is. And you're just wandering around these maps. Um, it's uh, that's it's terrible. Bad. That's terrible. It's it is on a like really, really bad level. We're not even talking like uh, it's just shittily made. This is like. Why? Why would yeah. you even attempt this? Why? Why you do this? Yeah, why you do this? It's so fucking disappointing. Plus, I didn't experience this, but apparently, some people, when you're playing the small, the normal size game modes, like I don't know, six v six or ten v ten team deathmatch stuff, right? Apparently, you can get put on one of those big maps, and it'd be really running around for twenty minutes without finding anybody. Oh, God. <laughs> I was like, I didn't, I didn't have that happen. The maps I thought were pretty decently sized. There was one that was kind of big, but right, it was right, all right. right. The problem with my problem with those maps, though, and for anybody who's this is a really not niche, but if you were into those kind of shooters, if you've played Call of Duty and things like that, um, is that the maps are almost tailor made to camping, right? And snipers if you're uh, even remotely good sniper can own a map because they're so big and your sight lines are super super far so that it it's like if you aren't camping um you're going to be at a severe disadvantage oh uh, on some so, of these so, bigger maps so now they're favoring the campers it seems like it and yeah. i don't know i don't i doubt it was intentional but i don't think they've had the same experience of making these kind of maps as someone like dice has or you know when they've made battlefields right, where you right. have to have things to break that up and even battlefield the maps are massive so you can be in a tall building and have sight line across the entire map right but there's so many people that it, it kind of it, it balances itself out in this game there's not quite enough to populate the maps at the same time the spawning is it feels random right as right, fuck right. whereas it, it so it, it's just like i i literally legitimately spawned one time walked less like just 15 feet or something outside the building and ran into the enemy spawn where immediately six people spawned in front of me oh wow like like it was like i'm like those are right across the street from each other yeah that's insane which is funny because half the time I couldn't find anybody. <laughs> and it now little... here's the entire enemy team. Throw a grenade. Exactly. Like right in front. Yeah, I was like, if I had didn't suck, just unload on all of them. But they all like basically spawned facing me, and I was facing the other direction. Oh. It's just I, I'm like, oh, okay, someone shot me in the back, and then like eight people run over my dead body, and the kill cam shows and turns, and he's got like all these other guys spawned all on. It was just I was like, oh come on, this is awful. <laughs> All it right. was. That was a big disappointment for That's the multiplayer. Dead. That's it just terrible. didn't wasn't very fun. It's okay. Um, but overall the game's like a a, a six and that's generous, I think. Uh, maybe it could get to seven one if with some patching on the multiplayer. Yeah, yeah, um, maybe. But the campaign, it's kind of Kind of, kind of. It's fun. it's fun. You play it for the campaign. If you rent the game, something like that. If yeah, you're don't really buy into it. the multi Call of Duty multiplayer, <laughs> don't buy it. Yeah. Unless you're really into MP. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so did you see the uh, Zeni Max to refund customers from Fallout yes, 76? Just the, the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission accepted a court enforceable undertaking from three related video game companies after they acknowledged they were likely to have misled customers about their consumer guarantee rights in relation to the online action game Fallout 76. Yep. So basically, three branches of Zenimax. Um, have accepted that their actions were likely to have violated. Australian consumer law protections. Yes. So like, hilarious. Yes. I love that they had to admit that. Um, yep. ACC received complaints as any Max reps told customs consumers they were not entitled to a refund after they experienced a variety of faults with the Fallout 76 game, including, in some cases, problems with servers, lagging, graphical, and visual problems. It's Zenimax. It's part. Bethesda. Like, why would you not, not expect that? Not they're they're admitting to they lied about the refund, right. but at the same time, they're also kind of admitting to we released this shitty product, yeah, and yeah. lied about how good it was. Like that. That to me, oh, I love is, that. That just to me this is dumpster amazing. fire that is Fallout seventy six. Yeah, it's um, just it's like oh, oh, oh mm, yes. yes, your tears are so delicious. They are. <laughs> um, so basically. Zenium will offer to provide full refunds to consumers who contacted them between the 24th of November last year and June 1st of this year. Yeah. Which, who knows refund. how many that is. Right. Uh, and this is just Australia because they actually have 
decent consumer protection laws. Yep. That, you know, oh yeah, no, they they have, don't have very good protection yeah. consumer protection laws. Like some of the best in the world, as far as I am aware. So yeah, um, yeah, I thought that was pretty hilarious. That just continues. I mean, it's great, yeah. When a consumer has purchased a product that has a fault which amounts to a major failure, the Australian consumer law provides them with the right to ask for their choice of either repair, replacement, or refund. Love that. You know what? Major I you know what I failure. What I would have loved. How better to that, describe that game? Instead of a instead of a refund, a bunch of like Australian consumers came together and said, "Hey, fix the shit, fix the shit." Fix and the then name. under Australia's law, they would be required to fix Fallout 76. Honestly, I think at that point, they're just like, just take all our money. We yeah. Can't. There's not this. We thought it was good enough to release as a full product in this state. What do you expect from us? I mean, seriously. Like, like I'm, and I would never. Like, I don't want it to sound like I was blaming consumers or anything when I said, uh, it's Bethesda. What do you expect? No. Like, that was more so the jab at Bethesda because it's Bethesda. Yeah, yeah. No, no. no. We, we totally acknowledge that. Oh, they, absolutely. They deserve none of what they've gotten in retrospect. Like, like, like it's you not, know, the funny thing is, like, like, Bethesda used to Not be my favorite uh, triple A gaming studio. Yeah, right? they they cre- they're similar for me. They they've crafted stories and lore and stuff that has inspired so much creativity in me. I'm like, yes, I love this. And now it's like they can all go die in a fire. It's like they've gone way way down in that specifically crafting those stories, yeah. building that lore, building an interesting world. And, ju- um, and that's just the stuff that's gotten sacrificed, and just creating a game that works. Yeah, like I, I've literally watched as Bethesda games, if they've gone on and on, have gotten buggier and buggier. Yeah, like like Morrowind had its issues, but you know, the game breaking bugs weren't as numerous as you mm. as you do in later games. Like I just don't I don't get it. How do you fuck up as you get better yeah. at it? You know, <laughs> it's using that same broken engine. Yep. It's like, a big part of it, which that immediately you can tell when you start playing Outer Worlds. It's like, oh my god, this isn't that Bethesda engine. Yes, this is so. This is refreshing. It just works. <laughs> yes, um, I do. I don't know. Yeah, I just. I'm. I'm glad that this has come out, and I. I want to sit there and congratulate all the Australian consumers who are getting their refunds now. And I want to just laugh at ZeniMax and Bethesda, which I don't care what you're going to argue. They are the same company. Oh, well, yeah. For all so, intents and purposes, they are the same company. ZeniMax is the alphabet to Bethesda's Google, yeah. right? Like, they're just a holding company. They still count as each other. Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? So it's like, I just, I love it. Um, I love uh, one thing that I had forgotten um, about this specifically, or I, I don't know if I glanced over it. But when we talked about uh, last week or the week before, whenever it was about their hundred dollar service not working, uh, that was last week. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't I think. focus on, or we didn't. They didn't talk about the fact that this is coming out when they announced that their massive update to actually turn this into a full fledged video game, which is going to add NPCs and populated towns. Yeah, that got delayed till next year yeah. or uh, to be announced yeah i can't remember if it, i just know it's not coming out this year which is when it was supposed to come out which is hilarious to me that you would take what is actual to n- fix our fucking mistake that we charged you 60 dollars for we're going to go ahead and delay that but here is here pay us for more stuff that doesn't work that, it's just mm, pay it's us just, i love it Pay us for the solutions to the problems that we created. Yeah, problems we created. Oh my god, it's like fucking paid. Uh, it's so, yeah. it's so hilarious. To it's me. one of those things where it's just like, yes, you are now getting what you deserved. You're getting your just desserts, and this is oh, this is incredible. And this I, I, I can only hope that this sets a precedent and makes other countries, especially those in like Europe, oh, especially the, the European Union, go. Thing. Maybe we should look into that, too. I, I, I know that there's a lot of European countries that, I, at least I think, there are quite a few that have similar protection laws. I mean, like the European it, Union in general they, has yeah, they make it more difficult for people to even laws. sell there because they're afraid of having to deal with that. Yeah. Because American companies only think of Profits. profit first. Yeah. Um, we're instead of thinking of delivering a good product. Yeah. Uh, which is hilarious. To I me. mean, yeah, you sit there and you look back like, like I am a loyal customer of certain brands because they create a good product yeah right so like 
if you create a good product, you earn loyalty. Yeah. If you earn loyalty, you get a following. You get a following, you get money, constant money flowing in. But at that point, that's when those companies go, and then you start making the cheaper product. Yeah. Because they will buy it anyway. Or we will release a new phone with barely any upgrade every year and, and charge them an exponential amount more money. And that's when I – Hint, when hint that's wink, that, wink. Yeah, Apple. But yeah. Um, that's when you get to a point where it's like – Okay, well, I'm not going to buy your product anymore. Exactly, but I mean, they, that, they know that they're going to get many of them. That's so. how I do it anyway, right? Like, yeah. like one more is a headphone company. It's it's Chinese based, I believe, but mm-hmm. they have they have a comp- they have a branch here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. They make damn good headphones for mm-hmm. not a lot of money, right? They make amazing headphones. They sound good. They they have decent build quality, and they're worth it to me because I, I'm a I I like good quality audio. Yeah. So it's like. When I sit there and I, I I bought their first pair just on a whim, couldn't find any real information about it, mm-hmm. um, but except for a couple of reviews from some audiophile whips, I said, "Hey, these are great. They should they sound like they should be four hundred dollars." So I'm like, yeah. "Okay, I'll give them a shot." Bought them hundred bucks, best headphones I ever bought. That means the next headphones that I bought from them were two hundred dollars. They were yeah. even more expensive, even better build quality, even better sound. Yeah. And then when I decided I was going to start streaming a couple of years back, I bought a two hundred fifty dollar pair of their headphones. Because I'm over the top and stupid. Yeah, I've never looked back. Like these, all this company is, they make great products, yeah. and that's what you need to do. If you put out great products, people will buy them. People will buy them a lot, and then you'll get people like me who will recommend them to other people, friends, and word of mouth advertising. It's, they're great. Like that's what, that's what that's what I feel like we've lost our vision when it comes to that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not just a loss of vision. It, the companies get to a point where those huge companies see that and go, that's nice, but why why don't we sell something shit yeah. for a little bit less of the price, but we you know, basically lie about it Yeah. and tell everybody that it's amazing because we got this celebrity to endorse it. Right. Uh, um, beats. Yeah. And it's just it's just the way there's no that's not well we can have some of the money that way but the cost on the headphones is is you know pretty high because of we're actually putting quality products. So let's not do that and make all of the money. Yeah. And then what and then you know if you have an intelligent customer base that's when they abandon you. Yeah, if you have that intelligent customer base. Unfortunately, we're talking about companies that also have bought all the other brands. Unfortunately, we're talking about Americans. Yeah, we're talking about American corporations that have bought all the no, other no, brands. Americans. So you're literally paying. America, you're stupid. You're literally paying. And it doesn't matter if you buy the other brand because we already bought that brand. Yeah. Or we're going to jack up the price on the other brand because we own their, uh, who distributes their fucking yeah. whatever. I mean, it is really sad, but like, it, I, I just find it so disheartening to know that quality products like p- companies yeah. who take actual pride in the stuff they produce have all fallen to the wayside and, and they're always small companies yeah like for the most part like you can like sometimes go and get a really good pair of like sony headphones for 250 dollars or something like that right but it's like you know you, the markup on those is insane yeah Compared to what a like a newer smaller company that decides they're going to make quality stuff for you know whatever what small price they can whatever yeah. they can make off of it and then boom yeah and that's why I like one more that's why mm-hmm. so far I I've continued to stick by them you know and I've continued to go yep I w- I want more stuff from you guys they're great yeah. And so, and you know, and, and I'm serious. And they're they? headphones, so you're not going to see a news article next year that says one more accused of uh, spying and stealing data on all of their. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, <laughs> I liked your phone. God damn it. <laughs> so, <laughs> was that Huawei? Huawei. I think Huawei. I bought one yeah. Of their phones. I was like, oh, this thing's fucking awesome. I mean, we both did. We both bought the Nexus yeah. 6P, so it's like, and that was Huawei made. Oh, yeah, that was too. And so it's like, and then you did buy a Huawei device, like P10 or some shit I like bought that. Yeah. whatever, I think that was the phone that I got that had like two SIM card slots. Right. But I mean, the phone was powerful as shit. I think it had 16 gigs of RAM back when that wasn't no. a regular thing. Well, no. No, okay, not 16. Because we were just now breaking 12, so it didn't okay. have Well, it had like 8 gigs of RAM or something. It had more RAM than any other phone on the market for that price. Yeah. It was an amazing fucking phone. <laughs> and then I had so many goddamn problems with the uh, um, uh, preloaded software. Yeah. Um, uh, but And then my um, the sensor for tilt sensor went out on it. Yeah. 
then you had the same problem with your Asus, which I feel I still feel bad to this day for recommending. Oh yeah, it looks good on paper. Yeah, terrible in practice. Yeah. So I, I felt bad, but whatever, you know. That was mostly the preloaded stuff was Asus. Oh my god, that was ugh, it was trash. I I I I've run out of steam. That's cool. <laughs> I, you know, I'm speaking of steam. Their new update came out. Oh yeah, and the library takes longer to load now. So fuck you. Don't no, stop it. <laughs> Go back to the old way. <laughs> really? Is it out now? Uh, I think so. I just it looks prettified the 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 library when I actually pull up um cuz I use the launcher. Right. Yeah, I mean obviously everyone yeah. has to use the launcher. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, yeah. Duh. Um but it um, it shows I don't know, it's it's different. It shows different. It has like a instead of having like the little play button up top, it's got like dedicated bars uh-huh. for things underneath, like play and shows stuff and shows your hours and things. Right. It's it looks to me more like um the Xbox Live uh display. The one of the older ones, but it looks like a console. Um so kind of like big picture mode type deal. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like something you would expect out of like Sony's interface or because it, instead of like, you know, I mean, I'm sitting here and like I have Steam pulled up on my my laptop, and I'm realizing there's no way for me to force the client to check for updates. That's weird. Yeah, like like I'm like like any other client, I can just uh, you know go and say hey uh, update, and no, there's there's no uh, there's like nothing in the help menu, nothing in the about menu, nothing like that. Like I wonder just, if I signed up for like. To be one of their no, I recently did like, like that. basically I have to shut Steam down and then fire it back up and it should check for updates for, that way. To which get, is yeah, dumb. That's not how you build good software. Fuck you, Steam. I noticed mine the other day. I got that pop up window that said uh, update now. Yes, no. <sighs> so here we go, updating Steam. Let's see what this is about. Yeah, see, I have no idea. I could, like, like, I, like I know I got the update on my desktop since the power went out seventeen times yesterday. <laughs> um, God, which was so. Uh, oh my god it was i i wanted to punch things um very very much all right it just suck and if it's your day off yes and you have a power it was my and day you're somebody off. like us that is reliant upon these things for our entertainment like i had the day off i just wanted to play video games yep oh wow that's 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 fine yeah it's yeah. not bad i just don't know it, it took longer to load uh, the game, like the game window specifically. Right. I mean, it popped up instantly for me. Um, but yeah, it's it's not bad. I still like. Am I? I'm not wrong. Am I? It looks like you would expect to see out of a console menu a little bit. A little bit. Things yeah. are I mean, just bigger and and like you could imagine them easier to flick through with a stick. Yeah, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like, no. I, I don't, I don't mind it. Like, it, it's not, it's not bad. I, I like, like the simplicity of the old. I, I liked sure, that about sure. Steam where the whole background could be a screenshot or something from your game. So one of the ones that I constantly saw for The Witcher, I believe it was, I don't know what part of the game it was, but it was a screenshot of, oh, it was the topless bar. Oh, yeah. Because I was in there and I'm like, <laughs> giggle screenshot. Tears. And I don't remember if I said, I said it to somebody like, this is why you need to play The Witcher 3. <laughs> like, so constantly I would open up Steam. Oh, and I know what happened to people who played The Forest or the Conan game, where it's just a screen and not even a screenshot, but yes. a random image from your game when you're playing it. And it's just the dick <laughs> <laughs> or tits or things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that constantly showed up on the back on background. Oh man, you know, we were just talking about this yesterday. Yeah. Um, how in Destiny Two you play through the campaigns. Minor spoiler for Forsaken, they kill Cade Six. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at my library right now, and of course, under the recent game shelf, it's Destiny. That was the last thing I was playing. Yeah. And uh, which, by the way, our friend Danny is playing right now. Um, yeah. Cade Six is on the little icon. Like, he's he's, hey. he's right at the front. He's like, he's at the front of it. And I'm like, yeah. oh, he dies. The, like from playing Destiny 1 and I didn't play all the other DLC, he's the only character with any personality whatsoever. Yeah, seriously. But, I mean, the other two are stoic and, and whatever. He's like yeah. fun and goofy. He, like, he's like, he is that rogue character. He is the dead, he is Deadpool meets, oh, how did I describe him yesterday? Deadpool meets, uh, Han Solo. I, yeah. Or Deadpool meets Nathan Fillion, or Deadpool. because it is Nathan Fillion. Yeah, so it's like I love it. It is the perfect Nathan Fillion. I think it is. I I don't know. I don't. I'm not really worried about it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's he's good. he's, it's he's good the stuff. Worst Kate. 
Um, which Nathan Fillion, you can't not have Nathan Fillion play that kind of character. Yeah. Uh, so it's 100% like, no shit. That's, that's what they did. Yeah. Because that is who Nathan Fillion is. So it was like Nathan Fillion in any role, but that's a good thing. Yes. And it's also why he's the only character anyone gave a shit about. Not to guess what, guess who else voiced him? Mm. Nolan North. Voiced uh, Kate Six? Yeah. Did in, he voice him in... In the Forsaken campaign. Oh, I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know they changed. Yeah, I, I, I just... Yeah, because you, you decided to look it up. Or maybe um, it's just Nolan North. Maybe, I don't know. But um, what else did Nolan North do? I I don't know. Oh, Deadpool. he did not voice... It. Yeah, they, they he didn't do it in Forsaken. Nope, Forsaken was Nolan North. Ah. Which... Which is why he reminded me so much of Deadpool because yeah, Nolan North also I, does who's Deadpool. Also, again, same exact. You, he's in these roles for a reason. Yes. Well, all right, guys, it. that's it for us. That's cool. Um, I'm, um, I'm done. One thing that is kind of sad news, but I mean, it it happens. Um, is um, oh, I guess we the, have one more thing. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a pretty quick thing. Okay. Um, Grandpa from the Boondocks, oh, as most yeah. people will know. Oh man. Um, the comedian uh, passed away. Oh yeah. Um, uh, or Gramps from Friday. Um. Oh my God! Why can't I remember his I name? Know. Oh, I feel awful because I loved him. He was great in anything that he did. Uh, he was also just a fucking Witherspoon. Great comedian. John Witherspoon. Yes. Yeah. Um. Oh man, that yeah, that's that's awful. Rest in peace, man. That dude was amazing. Yeah. Um. He, yeah, he died uh 29th of October. Yeah, age 77. Which, I mean, he lived a lot good long life. Yeah. You can't be you know you can't be upset about that. Um. But yeah, definitely rest in peace to that guy of of all the people. Because I mean, he he was great in every role he was ever in. Mm. I I don't th- I can't think of a single role he was in that I was like oh he sucks like no he he was funny he was in BoJack too I didn't know that I haven't watched it but yeah yeah he, he was in BoJack he was in so many and I remember this he would pop up in so many Disney <laughs> Channel cartoons uh-huh. and especially like the even the later ones Ninth Grade Ninja Kim Possible The Proud Family Baby's Kids okay those weren't Baby's Kids wasn't a Disney Channel I don't think but um, no no. <laughs> I remember Baby's Kids was pretty fucked up. Yeah. But uh but the Proud Family like Kim Possible. Mhm. He was uh, he, he was awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah, rest in oh, peace. Yeah. yeah. Guy lived a good long life. Now I'm going to okay. go home and fucking watch Friday and Friday after next. He he left us with a bunch of just great <laughs> stuff. Um So yeah, thanks man. Thanks for everything. Mhm. But yeah, that that's it. All um, right guys. I'm done. Sign I'm tired. I want to go to bed. <laughs> Actually, I don't. I want to go play Destiny now that we've talked about it, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, if you guys liked our uh, episode, like, share, subscribe, and uh, check it out. Check us out. If you really like us, websites. Sh- shoot us a buck on Patreon. Yeah, get your name and credits. You know, we'll <laughs> shout you out every now and then, like we did with Rupert Nori. Like, hey, guys. Um, but, yeah, for the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. Uh, Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck Bethesda. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.